What if I told you this jersey number is banned from the NBA? Or that there's a four-point line you've never seen before? These are 17 NBA rules you didn't know exist. And first, there's a dunk that's so dangerous, it was banned by the NBA. And I believe Shins has kept it alive again, did he? Yep, he did. Almost put it in, too. Here's Bowie. Shakia, look! Hold on to the roof! The Shaq attack! Yeah, this dude Shaq was dunking so hard, he was destroying entire hoops, putting everyone around him in danger. So in 1993, the NBA was forced to create the no shatter rule, which says if a dunk shatters the backboard, the point isn't counted and the player gets a technical foul. Man, Shaq changed the NBA, but so did our next rule. Cause in the NBA, you could be forced to pay millions of dollars just for being thick. See, in 2022, Zion Williamson reached over 300 pounds and became the fattest player in the NBA. So when he went to renegotiate his contract, the Pelicans agreed to pay Zion, but with just one little condition, a weight clause that stated Zion legally has to stay under 295 pounds. And if he doesn't, he'll have no choice but to fork over millions of dollars. Damn, I mean, they got a rule for everything. Like, uh, the NBA even made a rule for when an entire team dies. On January 17, 1960, the Minneapolis Lakers were flying back home from a game in St. Louis, when all of a sudden, the Lakers were in a free fall, giving the pilot only one option, a crash landing. Now, miraculously, everyone did end up surviving. But this near-death experience raised a serious question for the NBA. What would happen if an entire team died at once? Well, after this incident, the league drew up their craziest rule yet, the disaster draft, which basically states that if more than five players on a team die, the NBA would host an emergency draft where the affected team would take players from other teams until they fill their roster. Yeah, they really got a rule for when players die. That's just crazy. But you know what else is crazy? The fact that in the NBA, there's a rule that bans farting. Yeah, in the late 2000s, NBA players were being terrorized by the dirtiest man in the league, Dwight Howard. Because this dude was farting like it was his job. Damn. Oh no! Dwight was farting so much, it became his reputation. Players around the league were calling him the greatest farter in the NBA. Yes, they actually said that. But eventually, it started to piss off his teammates. So in 2009, the Orlando Magic made the no flatulence policy, which made it against the rules to fart during team activities. All because, quote, Dwight really likes to cut the cheese. Damn. You fart well, that's how new. Come on, Dwight. You out here making them ban farts? That's ridiculous. But not as ridiculous as our next rule. Because in the NBA, yo mama jokes are strictly forbidden. See, this is Don Nobler, Maverick super fan and yo mama joke enthusiast. And in 2018, Don was sitting courtside watching the Mavs play the Clippers when he started talking trash to Patrick Beverly and Pat was having none of it. So he fired back saying, F you. But that's when Don went for the kill, roasting Pat Bev with just three words. F yo mama. And that is when all hell broke loose. Oh wow, he just threw the ball at Don Nobler. Patrick Beverly just threw the ball at Don Nobler. Which is not very nice. No! Well, he's gonna get a technical for something. Yeah, and after a diss like that, the NBA had to do something. So not only did they ban Don from the arena for a year, but the very next season, they literally made Yo Mama jokes illegal, saying, we've added a rule that makes comments about a player's mom, something we'll pull a fan out of their seat for. Oh really? Well, you can pull me out of my seat, but what you'll never pull me out of is Yo Mama. But anyways, we gotta talk about referees, cause it's literally against the rules to laugh at a ref. Yeah. In 2007, Tim Duncan was on the bench, just minding his own business, when this happened. Harry misses the free throw. 
And a technical foul call. I think it's on Tim Duncan sitting on the bench. Somebody on the bench for the Spurs. Yep, it's Duncan, who was unhappy with the lack of a call or a call earlier. Tim Duncan just got a foul for laughing at the ref. But it didn't stop there, because a few minutes later, one low giggle got him ejected. For Alberto, and a blocking foul. As Joey Crawford saying Alberto moving. Hey, Popovich doesn't like that one either. And another technical foul. And this is one Duncan. Duncan's out of the game. He's thrown Duncan out of the game. That's the second technical, which is an automatic ejection. As we've been showing you, Duncan's been laughing. Maybe Crawford felt he was showing him up by constantly laughing. What the hell? Uh, that egghead went too far. Uh, what's next? You can't even look at a ref? Oh yeah, that's a rule too. Yep. Time out LA. Whack! Get out! But he didn't say nothing. Get away from me, Steve. But he didn't say nothing. Get away from me, Steve. He, not, he, he didn't about. say a word. Technical foul, Wallace, he's gone. No, not right. I asked him three times to stop the there for me to try to intimidate me. I'm done. He's gone. I mean, he did ask him to stop three times. The guy kind of had it coming. And so did Dennis Rodman, because I bet you didn't know that. He forced the NBA to ban his jersey number. Back in 2000, Rodman signed with the Mavericks. During a meeting with team owner Mark Cuban, he really wanted to have 69 as his jersey number. And Mark was down. So the very next day, he ordered 10,000 Rodman jerseys with 69 on them. But then the league found out. They weren't too pleased with Rodman's number, so they put it to a vote. And by the end, the NBA decided to ban number 69, leaving Rodman with no choice but to wear number 70. Man, uh, they really do got a rule for everything. And no one knows this better than Karan Butler, because this dude created the weirdest rule in NBA history. See, in the 2000s, Karan had a couple of screws loose, because this dude was obsessed with chewing straws. Got a handful on me right now. <laughs> you know, nearest Burger King, McDonald's, uh -huh. grab straws, uh -huh. grab a handful of straws. And, How yeah. do you know when one's done? Uh, start getting a little stringy. <laughs> yeah, gotta spit it out. I do it at home. My daughter even does it sometimes. I don't do these. I don't do 7-Eleven straws or anything. No. McDonald's, Burger King. Jesus, this guy was getting bricked up over some plastic. But for Karan, chewing straws was a way to calm his nerves. So he even started doing it during his games, averaging a ridiculous 12 straws per game. First half, I can go through at least six. In the first half? Yeah, easy, so 12 a game. But eventually, the NBA got a little concerned because they thought all that chewing might make him choke. So in 2010, they decided to save Karan from himself, creating the no straw rule, which literally says, players are banned from chewing straws during NBA games. <laughs> Ridiculous. But look, man, sometimes players make their own rules. And if you don't follow them, you'll get your ass beat. See, in 2021, the Thunder were beating the Lakers by five points with just four seconds left. I mean, the game was already in the bag. But when Darius Baisley got the ball, he did something dirty. And they throw it away. And there's the capital. The bow on it was Baisley dunking it. Uh-oh, and Russ is telling him, Russ is in Baisley's face, telling him not to do that. See, Darius broke an unwritten rule between players, which says, if your team's basically won, and it's just a matter of time, you gotta dribble the clock out and not score, because it's disrespectful as hell. So Russ just had to put Darius in check. But hey, the NBA needed to put his players in check too. That's why there's a rule that bans them from using Twitter. See, in the late 2000s, when Twitter first launched, players were addicted immediately, and they started tweeting some crazy stuff. You had Shaq announcing when he farts, KD threatening people. Hell, uh, some players were even tweeting during their own games. So in 2009, the NBA put their foot down, creating the Twitter rule, which bans players from tweeting during work hours, and allows the league to fine them thousands of dollars for offensive tweets. Man, these guys gotta be careful with their tweets. But what they really need to look out for is other players cheating. See, in 2016, it was Hawks, 
first Rockets. And late in the first quarter, Paul Millsap was at the free throw line. When he got in a bit of a sticky situation. The Rockets had a 19 point lead early in the game and Millsap's telling him to look at the ball. Must be sticky. Yeah, someone sprayed the ball with this weird sticky stuff called stick'em. And not only was this gross as hell, but it also broke an NBA rule that says altering a basketball in any way is strictly prohibited. So players were left with one question. Who the hell covers their balls in glue? Well, after rolling back the tape, the perp was finally revealed. And it was none other than Dwight Howard. Paul Millsap threw the ball back to the ref because Dwight Howard, when he came to the sideline, he sprayed some stuff on his hand that made the ball very sticky. And when Twitter found out, Dwight was cooked because people thought he was cheating and they tried to cancel the man. So the very next day, Dwight was left with no choice but to defend himself. I just think that it's getting overblown, like I'm doing something, you know, crazy. Again, you know, I've never been a cheater. I've never been a type of player that has to do something illegal to win. It's upsetting, but I can't control it. I've been using it, using uh, the spray for the last five seconds. Five years. I've never hit the spray. I've never did anything to try to hide what I was doing. But hey, in the end, it was all good. Because instead of fining or suspending Dwight, the NBA just let him off with a warning. Yeah, and this dude Dwight can do anything he wants with his balls. Well, anything except touch him. Because what if I told you that in the NBA, touching yourself is illegal? Yeah. See, in the 2004 playoffs, it was Kings versus Timberwolves. And with Minnesota up one with just 30 seconds left, Sam Cassell got the ball and went nuts. What about Cassell? <laughs> Three point lead. That's a tough shot. Sam Cassell. Yeah, this guy let them both hang out, marking the beginning of a nut grabbing epidemic. Because from that point on, players across the NBA joined hands and started grabbing their junk like it was their job. But in 2010, the NBA had enough. So they created a rule that says players who grab their crotch can be fined up to 25,000. And with a punishment like that, you'd think players would stop touching themselves. But no, these dudes stay grabbing their balls left and right, and it's costing them a sack. Because since the rule's been enforced, players have been fined over 200,000 for it. Man, uh, the league needs to loosen up a little bit. It's like they hate having fun. Like, uh, I bet you had no idea that they even banned trolling. Yeah. In 2022, Russell Westbrook played like trash. So, during a game against the Kings, he got trolled for it by the entire arena. Because every time he missed a shot, the DJ played this. Get off early. What is that possession so good for them offensively? The young man is hustling. Westbrook with a deep three ball. Lynn with the rebound. And that's what happens when Fox pushes tempo. Great things happen. If you run with him, if yep. you run with Tyler. And after doing this all game long, Kings topped it off by awarding Russ the ice cold player of the game. Which is pretty funny, but not to the NBA. Because the very next day, they told the Kings that trolling players during a game is now officially against the rules. But look, trolling is the last thing players should worry about. They gotta watch out for Steph Curry instead. Because this dude is changing the rules of basketball. See, over the years, Steph has shot the lights out, averaging 45% from the three-point line. And eventually, teams started wondering, how the hell can we shoot like that? Well, to play like Steph, you gotta practice like Steph. Which is why in 2017, teams started adding four point lines to their practice facilities. Yeah, I'm talking the Hawks, the Bucks, hell, even the Sixers had Ben Simmons pulling up from half court. Whoa! Come on! I'm not losing this money! No, sir! Damn, I can't believe my man hit that. But what I really can't believe is our next rule. The fact that women can play in the NBA. Yeah, and not only that, but there's even a woman that's made it to the league. 
see, this is Lucia Harris. And she was a beast in college. Because at six foot three, she averaged 26 points and 14 rebounds a game. But after graduating in 1977, there really wasn't an opportunity for Lucia. It's not like the WNBA was around. So she decided to take her degree, get a normal job, and start a family. But a few months later, everything changed when Lucia got a phone call from the New Orleans Jazz saying they selected her in the 1977 NBA draft and they were ready to fly her out to their training camp until Lucia told them she was pregnant. So unfortunately, she had to say no to the NBA. But her story doesn't end there because even though she never played in the NBA, in 1992, the league decided to induct her into the Hall of Fame. But hey man, you never know. One day, maybe we'll see another woman make it to the league and actually get to play. And look, well, we've talked about a lot of rules in the NBA, but there's no way you knew about the original rules. See, way back in the 1890s, when basketball was first invented, they had all kinds of weird rules. Like, instead of playing with a basketball, they played with a soccer ball. And for the hoop, they didn't use a regular net like they do now. It's called basketball because they literally used a fruit basket. And they had to get a ladder to grab the ball every time they scored. But there's one more rule that's just wrong. Because not only was it illegal to run with the ball, but you couldn't even dribble the ball either. Yeah, dribbling was against the rules. And as a result, these original rules made basketball suck. So over the next century, they rewrote the entire rule book, turning basketball into the sport we all know and love today. Man. Thank God they changed the rules, because I don't think fans would put up with that. I mean, uh, they barely tolerate the game now. Like, uh, we've seen fans throw stuff at players, flip guys off. Hell, I've seen fans start rioting over a missed layup. Look, if all that sounds interesting, they need to click this video right here. These are the times NBA fans went too far. And uh, trust me, dog, you don't want to miss this video, all right? So what are you doing? Click it. It's a good, it's a good video. It's a, it's a great video, actually. It's a great video.